Just before Christmas of 2004, a signal appeared on the shortwave bands that caused perhaps more mystery than many of the oddities that have appeared from and then disappeared into the ether over the past several decades. The reason for the mystery gave the station its name. Why would you hear the Warner Brothers character Yosemite Sam on the bands? Yosemite Sam was the name given by shortwave listeners to what was believed to be some sort of number station. Although it never sent any numbers, the signal was rumoured to be some sort of command or secret messaging system. It started making intermittent broadcasts between December the 19th 2004 and February the 16th 2005, so short-lived when you compare it to stations like the Lincolnshire Poacher and the Buzzer. It transmitted on 3700, 4300, 6500 and 10500 kilohertz and the voice of Yosemite Sam could always be heard. The transmissions would start on 3700 kilohertz and then 10 seconds later it was repeated on 4300. It would then move to 6500 kilohertz followed by a final transmission on 10500 and the whole series of transmissions and frequency changes took exactly 2 minutes. The broadcasts appeared just before 1 minute past the hour and started with a 0.8 second data burst followed by The audio segment for Yosemite Sam's voice is taken from Bunker Hill Bunny, a Looney Tunes Bugs Bunny cartoon from 1950. You better say your prayers, you flea bitten varmint! I'm a gonna blow you to smithereens! Theories suggest that the data burst was designed to send the first part of a message, and then numbers would have followed. They go on to suggest that due to no numbers being sent, the Yosemite Sam segment was just filler, but I find that hard to believe. Naturally, this caught the attention of shortwave listeners who began to compile reception reports that seemed to indicate that the transmitter site was located somewhere in the desert around Albuquerque, New Mexico. The initial broadcast started or were first heard on December the 19th 2004 and only lasted until December the 23rd 2004. They later returned almost one month later on January the 14th 2005 on the original frequencies plus the same frequencies as the time signals VVW and VVWH of 10 and 15 megahertz. So here's where things get interesting. The use of 3700 kHz was probably not the wisest choice for transmissions of this nature since it falls in the middle of the 80 meter amateur band and its use attracted the attention of two licensed hams living in New Mexico, Mike Stark WA5OIP and Mike Langner K5MGR. Interestingly, the FCC monitoring station did provide an approximate area that the Yosemite Sam signal was coming from, and the local official observers and section manager were notified. On Wednesday the 16th of February 2005, the two US amateur radio operators decided it was time to track down the signal. They quickly realised that the signal began to grow stronger as they headed west, listening on a mobile radio setup. Then they shifted to a Potomac field intensity meter with a shielded loop antenna. Using this they quite easily and quickly located the offending transmitter at the Matic facility on the Laguna Indian Reservation in New Mexico. Part of Laguna Industries, a Native American business, the Matic Center is an acronym for the Mobility Assessment Test and Integration Center, a military facility used to develop advanced battlefield communication systems and not at that time generally known to the public. The facility sits just north of Laguna, New Mexico on Vietnam Veterans Road and although there appears to be either a VHF UHF tower or a stripped cell phone mast at the front, What's just up the road is what's interesting. They drove up to the building set just off the desert road and began to take photographs of the various towers, antennas and the building itself. A short way further up the road, still in the fenced compound, is what looks like the transmission site and likely the source of Yosemite Sam. 
Almost immediately, a man was spotted walking towards their truck, shouting and gesturing them to stop taking pictures and leave, which they quickly did. Interestingly, the two mics found the Yosemite Sam transmitter at about 2.30 in the afternoon, and the signal went off the air at around 5.30 that same day, and was never heard again. Langner stated that about five minutes before he and WA5OIP located the exact source of the interference, a pickup truck had passed them as they were parked and taking a bearing. He seems to think that the driver must have told somebody at the facility that they were being hunted. Although Laguna Industries still exists, albeit now specialising in car wash technology by the looks of the website, there were references to the Matic Centre on the website back in 2004 and 2005, which later disappeared. So, the mystery of Yosemite Sam was solved. Well, not really. We still don't know the reason for the transmissions and why such a distinctive voice was used that would attract listeners immediately.